Okay, so you want to go ahead and boot from CD to start up. So in this case, we are about to install Windows Server 2025. After you've done all the prereqs and determined what console you're going to use to get your lab started, you should be at this stage. So now, right here, you're just going to click through. So the first step is just to go ahead and click Next. We're going to click Next here. Agree. Put a checkbox. Click Next. It's going to search for you. So we're going to be creating Domain Controller verse um, number one. So we'll select Windows Server 2025, the desktop experience. Like I said in my previous versions, you have two versions, the standard and the data center. The difference is that the data center just gives you a little bit more that you can use. Now remember, if you do the two evaluations without the desktop experience, this is going to be where you have to use PowerShell to remotely administer it because it doesn't have the GUI interface, okay? So in this case, we are gonna work with the GUI starting off. So this will be our DC01 and we will select server 2025, the evaluation with desktop experience. Go ahead and click next right here. Accept the license agreement. And then from here, it's gonna search for the disk. Once you find it, we are gonna go ahead and create a partition. Click apply. So it's going to create all three partition spaces here. And like I explained before, the difference between the partitions is that in case your system gets corrupted later and you need to restore it, the Microsoft will create small little files, which is like a hundred megabytes, and it will store different recovery methods here so you can restore your system later. Okay. So we're going to install on the primary and click next. Now it's just going to prompt you and let you know what's about to happen. So once you are here, you should be good to go. And you're just going to go ahead and click on install. The process for this will really depends on how fast your system is, how much memory you have and your CPU speed. So from here, we're just going to pause the video and we'll be right back. So once your server has restarted, it will go to here, letting you know that it's one to keep installing. It will restart a couple of times and then you should be taken to your login screen. Okay, great. So now that your server is installed, the operating system, we're just gonna go ahead and create a secure password. And then once you're good to go, just go ahead and click finish. And it's gonna finalize your settings. And then now you can go ahead and log in to your system. So enter your password that you set earlier. and your server will log in for the first time. Here you can accept, and then you are freshly in, inside your server. Now the initial phase after it starts for the first time, it will take a few minutes just to load up all um, everything that's within the server manager. So you can just give it a few minutes to load. Once the installation is ready, I want you to go ahead and we're gonna do housekeeping rules. This means we're just gonna configure a few things before we get started with building out our server. So the first thing we want to do is I want you to go ahead and click on the start button and find terminal and just go ahead and right click on terminal and run it as administrator. In here, we're going to type in what's called sconfig and it stands for server config and you're going to hit enter. This is going to take you into the server configuration 
menu where you can administer your server before we get started. So the first thing I would like to do, you wanna make sure that you have your network settings set because this is really important. You can set it here inside of your server config or you can hit start and just type in NCP. It will bring up your network control panel and you can go ahead and right click it here and set it here as well. If you're faster for you, you can do it here and we're just gonna set our settings if you're used to this way. So we wanna make sure that our IP address is going to be set where it never changes. So we we'll need to make sure we have a static IP. In this case, since I'm already running DHCP, whatever address my DHCP gave me, I'm gonna take it first and just use that as my static, just so I don't have any conflicts on the network. So let's go ahead and do IP config. And it gave me a 188. So I'm just gonna set that to 188. Okay, and then subnet mass is gonna still be 255.255.0. And then let's set our gateway. Okay. DNS, you can leave blank or you can set it, but it doesn't matter because once you convert this to a domain controller, your DNS settings will change itself. But for training purposes, we can just practice putting in these. 8.8.8.8 is a Google DNS, in case you're wondering. We're just gonna go ahead and click OK and click Close. Now that we have this set right here, we can go ahead and do an IP config slash all just to verify that it looks fi fine. If you look up here earlier before when we started, we had an IPv4 address, a short of 188. And then now down here, you can see that DHCP is not enabled. So we turned it off by setting it a static IP. We gave it back the 188 and we're good to go. Then also the DNS servers that we set right here are also good. And these are the IP addresses that we set earlier. Now, once that is complete, we just need to make sure that the computer name is going to be changed. So in, back inside of your server config, you can go ahead and hit number L2. It's gonna ask you for the new name. We're just gonna call this DC01. And go ahead and click. Enter. It's gonna ask you how you wanna change your name. It will say yes right now and we'll do a restart here. Go ahead and log back in once you have completed your restart. You can close out your server manager here. You can click do not show this again here and you can close this out. Now you wanna make sure that your System name did take, so there's a few ways you can do it. Just to check, you can right click and you can do computer name. And it'll say view your PC name right here. And you can double check here to make sure that DC01 is not the name of your computer. This is also another location that you could have changed it if you choose to, right? So once this is good to go and your name is good to go, your IP address we checked earlier before we restarted, so we should be fine. So we're gonna go ahead right here and add roles and features. You can also go up to manage and do add roles and features here and take it to the same location. Now the next step, we're gonna go ahead and click on next, skip the default. Make sure that it's set to role based on the default. No changes are needed and go click next. 
As you can see now, we're going to confirm that DC01 is the name that we gave it, and then the IP address is a static IP. Click next here. Now, in order to install Active Directory for the first time, you want to click Active Directory Domain Services. So you'll click there, accept and add the features. And then we're going to also add DNS as well to go along with it and add features as well. Nothing else is needed for this setup. So it, do not do not add anything else here. These are for later videos and walkthroughs. Right now, the focus is just an Active Directory with DNS. Go ahead and click Next. Do not add anything else here as well. Just click Next, Next all the way through, and then we're going to install. The installation for this takes a few minutes. So once it's complete, we will continue to the next step. Once the installation is complete, you will see that it's right here. It says installation succeeded. Now there's two ways you can do the next step. You can click right here to promote this server, but in case you had closed this early, you can go up to the triangle up the top, and then now we're gonna promote this server to a domain controller. So go ahead and click this link. At this time, we are going to create our new forest. Since there's not a controller that exists or any domain that exists, we are gonna create our new forest for the first time. So we're gonna go ahead and click add a new forest here. So the forest that we're gonna do is going to be something that's fictional. So let's go ahead and just type something in. I'm just gonna do global text.net. This is fine. We're going to click next. It's going to search to see if it exists on the next screen. Since it doesn't exist and we have no issues, put in your password. This password here is called the Directory Services Restore Mode Password. And it is used in case you need to restore Active Directory or move or export it later on. Delegation for this DNS server error. Do not worry about this. It's just basically stating that you can't find the DNS to match this. So for the first time, you'll see that error. It's not a big deal. The net bias will populate here right afterwards, giving you a short version of your uh, your domain. So this will be how we will log in later on for your net bias. Click next to move forward. Active Directory is a database. This is where all your database files will be stored on your Windows. Nothing to change here, just accept the defaults and click Next. Once you are okay with everything right here, right, you can go ahead and click Next. If you wanted to do this for later on, you can always use the script version here and you can save this as a PowerShell. And then you can use this to install your domain later. So you just do a save as somewhere. Now you can just go ahead and click next. There's a prereqs check. You need to have a green check on the top left hand corner. Just as such right here before you can continue. If you got any red in between, that just means that you need to go back and fix whatever errors that it told you earlier. Once this is good to go like this, you can go ahead and install, and we're about to now promote this domain controller. Promote this server to actually a domain controller. The process here will take a few, so we will be right back once it's complete. As you can see, once it's complete, it will sign you out and restart the system. System will go ahead and apply computer settings, and then also now it will restart and load Active Directory into it. Once your system has been restarted, something to take note of, your domain now will show up in front of your username. So this identifies that you are logging into a domain system. Let's go ahead and now uh, log back in.
as you can see, there will be a few changes on your screen. Once it's completely loaded, if you look over here to the left hand side, you're going to see a few more roles have been added to your server. As you can see now, ADDS has been loaded and DNS. These are the two roles that we were working on. And to verify, you can also wait for everything to load and then you'll see down here as well, ADDS is loaded and then also DNS. And these are actually up and running. Now to verify that it's been loaded, just go to tools and you're gonna go to Active Directory Users and Computers and DNS. If you click on Active Directory Users and Computers right here, it will load. You can also click on DNS as well and you will see that DNS has been loaded successfully. And then Active Directory also have been loaded. Now this completes the first step of the series of loading Active Directory. Next step, we'll move forward to administering and configuring Active Directory. Thank you for watching.